It's Ramsey Dewey over here at the Animal MMA Gym in Shanghai, China. Today, let's talk about Jack Dempsey, pure punching, and the power line. If you've read Jack Dempsey's book, Championship Fighting, Explosive Punching and Aggressive Defense, which you should because it's awesome. It's a very good book. And one of these days, I'm going to finish reading the audio version on this channel. I think I'm up to chapter nine right now. A bunch of you sent me questions about that, specifically about the power line. There is a picture in that book where the illustration looks something like this. Jack Dempsey tells you to do this exercise. Stand in a parallel stance, hold out one arm in front of you, thumb facing up, and three knuckle contact. Place those three knuckles on the back. Just kind of lean onto it, right? To get used to this idea of a power line, okay? What is that? And some people interpret that illustration to mean that we should only punch with a vertical fist Wing Chun style, and that's not what he's saying at all, okay? A pure punch and an impure punch. Let's go over an impure punch first. Impure punch is where the elbows come up first and then the fist comes out. This is analogous to throwing a fastball in baseball. A fastball is a very, well, relatively easy way to generate a lot of power very quickly. You lift the ball up like this, the elbow flares out, and then you throw it in this fashion, right? You can generate a ton of power and get a ball going very fast, but kids who pitch baseball in middle school and high school often end up needing elbow surgery from pitching so many fastballs, or they get horrible tendonitis in their elbows. Why? Because this is the same motion as an impure punch. I had the same problem, not from pitching baseball, but from throwing so many impure punches throughout my career. Because it's the most natural way to punch. Because you can generate a ton of power very quickly, very efficiently, and you can even knock people out. So what's wrong with it? Well, it's, it's a less efficient way to punch. It does a number on your elbows. It'll give you a tendonitis. It will shorten your career. So let's go back to that power line illustration where we're bringing the arm out like this, straight. You know, kind of like a Wing Chun punch. But if you watch the way Jack Dempsey actually boxed, was he always throwing those? No, sometimes he was. But a lot of times, what's he doing? He's corkscrewing the punch at the end. He's involving what's called a shoulder whirl, right? We bring the punch out like a curve ball. You know what a curve ball is? Well, a fastball is like this with the elbow flared out. A curve ball, when we throw that ball, the hand comes like this, and then at the end of the pitch, turns in the direction you want the ball to curve. And then as the ball flies out toward the uh, home base, it curves a little bit off the center line, right? So we do the same thing with a punch. We bring it out straight, kind of like that vertical Wing Chun punch. And at the end, as we're squeezing the fist together, then we will squeeze the hand together, we will rotate the shoulder, we will pull the opposite shoulder back, like so. So, see if you can tell the difference between a pure punch, with a corkscrew at the end, with the shoulder whirl, and an impure punch. Okay, so that center line means bring the pure punch down the center line, and then at the end of the punch, squeeze it together. Let me do that really slow. Maybe we should film this in slow motion. So let's not confuse that illustration in Jack Dempsey's book of leaning on the wall with three knuckles as an illustration of how we should always punch. This is an exercise to get you to understand a straight line with your arm as opposed to a curved bent elbow, right? If we're doing this, we don't have a nice frame to support our weight behind it. And all the weight goes into the elbow. If we have a nice straight frame, look, 
Now I can lean on it. Now I can support myself. Big difference. So whether I'm throwing a vertical punch like they do in Wing Chun, or whether I corkscrew my punch at the end and use a shoulder whirl, either way, I can throw that with a pure punch down the center line using the power line that Jack Dempsey taught. Way back when, I had this horrible case of tendonitis in my elbow, basically tennis elbow or whatever you want to call that. And it was from punching wrong. And by wrong, I mean impure punching. But it was the way I was always taught to punch. So one day, I was hitting the bag, throwing my right hand like that, feeling pretty confident. It was just some nice solid punches I'm landing. Hear that big smack when my fist lands. And I had a student who was a professional boxer from Russia. And they train a little bit differently in Russia. If, if you're from there or you know someone from there, then you know. If not, then not really. But he comes up to me and he's like, Coach, with all due respect, your right hand isn't right. I'm like, what do you mean my right hand isn't right? And he's like, please don't be offended. Your, your kicking is very good. Your boxing is okay. Your, your MMA, excellent. Your grappling, awesome. But your right hand isn't right. Please let me help you fix this. I'm like, okay, well, what do you have? So I humbled myself a bit and he pointed out two things. The elbow, right, the same thing Jack Dempsey taught the power line. Instead of the elbow coming up first and the hand coming out second, elbow facing the floor down here, thumb facing up, hand coming out this way. And then as you squeeze the fist, then we turn it. So notice now there's no stress on the elbow. The hand comes out in a straight line. The elbow never flares up out here. But then the second thing, the trigger step, with the right foot. So as I throw this, instead of pivoting and pushing off here, I do this little step. And a lot of boxing coaches in America will scream at you saying, no, don't do that. That's bad and wrong and you'll unbalance yourself. But the good ones know. This is not only going to help you fix your elbow position, it's going to extend your reach. And if I fully extend the hip, oh, if I twist that hip and pivot on my toes and all that good stuff I'm supposed to do. I still can't touch the target from here, right? Can't touch it at all. He's too far away. He is at that range where I cannot touch him. So I'm going to take a little step here. That trigger step, which brings my shoulder closer to the target, which also brings my fist closer to the target, but does not bring my head closer in a meaningful way that would be dangerous to me. A lot of people ask me, hey, Ramsey, shouldn't I do bench pressing for boxing? Isn't that good for punching? Well, it won't necessarily make you worse, but pulling exercises will have much more athletic crossover. If I want to throw my left hand, pull my right shoulder. If I want to throw a left hook, pull the right shoulder back. Where's the weight on your feet when you throw a left hook, for example? I take a little stab, I pivot, boom. Where's the weight? Take a very close look at my right foot right here, okay? Of the opposite side of the body, it's flat on the floor. How about my, my left? My left is up here, it's raised, the ball of my foot is there. Now watch as I transfer the weight. I transferred the weight from my front foot to my back foot. Why? Because I pulled my body weight back here to generate power. The power, here, come on up here. The power of a punch comes from transferring your weight from the punching side to the non-punching side. This is also very important to remember. Uh, hooks are not swings. Overhands are not swings. Punches are never swings. Punches are straight lines. Whether they are straight forward punches or hooks, these are also straight lines. Uppercuts are straight lines. Even overhands are straight lines. Yeah, the overhand also follows that principle, right? If you're swinging your arm like this, that's not an overhand, that's a crazy swing. And there is a place for that. If you want to set up a double leg takedown, give the guy a big distraction like that so he focuses on that crazy swing and then drop down, shoot for the legs. But if we're going to use that as an actual punch, bring it down the center line, up, over, and then down in a straight line. So notice my elbow never flares up and out here and over there in a crazy direction. I'm putting the force into my knuckles, into my opponent's face, not into my elbow. So make sure your punches are straight lines and not curvy, sloppy swings. 
So as soon as I changed my punching form, well, about three months later, this horrible searing, crippling pain in my elbow went away. Coincidence? No. If you are having difficulty, if you're having horrible pain, if you're having training injuries, it's probably because of your training tendencies. If you change the way you move, you're gonna change the way you feel and the way you perform. Thanks for watching. Now get out there and train.